Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Paps, a racing VTuber and an artist, and today we're going to be going back and doing some more art fight stuff. Yeah, we've been, we've been on a bit of a hot streak these past couple days, in this past week, I guess. Not this past couple days, this past couple days I only did one, but cumulatively, cumulatively. Did I pronounce that right? Cumulatively? Cumulonimbus. Cumulatively. Cumulative. Fuck it. Collectively, I've made, <laughs> I've made two this week, so we're hoping to bump that up to three now. Uh, so let's get let's head in. All right, I gotta tuck myself away into my little corner here. There we go. All right, so this is a character by Spasimoto called Galaharada. Not sure if I pronounce either the name of the artist or the character correctly. Uh, I've known Spasimoto for a while though. Um, we, we've we've been kind of consistently attacking each other for the, or at least I've been attacking them. I don't know, I don't remember too well. It's been years. Uh, but essentially we've kind of known known each other on for a while on Artfight and they've always got some very cool character concepts. I, I like, look at this. I, f I feel like that she would be like really, a really good fit in like a fighting game or something, you know? I think it's like the mask and everything. It reminds me a lot of like Bedman from Guilty Gear. I don't know why, it has a similar vibe. Also she's supposed to be like six foot, so. Nice. Okay, so I think for this one, we're actually gonna go for a very simplistic pose. And first of all, uh, all right. So for the object, what do we want for the for the doll? I mean, rather it's called like the object menu or something. Okay, so definitely kind of like on the stronger side, I think. Height. Uh, six foot is about 100 and... Okay, no, 180 centimeters. I recently learned that 180 centimeters is not, in fact, six feet. Uh, it's only about five foot ten. Uh, I think it's like... Three, three feet is one meter. So, it'll be about two meters tall. Or like 190 or something, I think. I, th I think like 190 would probably be closer. Oh, uh, what the hell, let's make her 200. Why not? We could have- we, we could use more tall people on Earth. You know, it's important to have like a wide diversity of, you know, heights and people. Because that way, you know, everybody has like different... You know, you gotta have people who can reach the top shelf and you gotta have people who can squeeze into tiny little vents. You know, it, it fills ecological niches. Okay, so... Hmm, okay, so I think the the thing in her hand is actually supposed to be like... It looks a little bit like a flower, but it's, I think it's supposed to be like the soul of somebody. You know, I think she has like the Esper powers or something, from what I understood. It's not that she has Esper powers or something, it's just that I, I'm, I'm not worried that I... I'm worried that I didn't understand the powers too well. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm thinking is actually to kind of have it from a low angle, kind of like this. Maybe even closer. Like this. And I kind of want to warp the... Okay, maybe we could do it with the scaling in... Yeah, with the perspective here. But I kind of wanted to make her neck a little bit longer, so it kind of more matches the model. So I think you can actually do that in with this. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can. If you, uh, you guys can't see it. I can't show you show it to you. But if you go into the um, sub tool detail, you can you can access it by clicking this little button here, on when, whenever you've got a three D model selected. Uh, you can actually change the individual parts of the model pretty in very interesting ways. I kind of want to increase the length of her arms as well. I feel like it would be a good look. No, that is decreasing the length. Okay. Then from there... Okay. I really just want to kind of like make her look almost tyrannical. If, I, I don't know if that's the right word, but I want to make her look very kind of off-putting. 
So maybe even in like a taller neck, kind of like leaned forward and then the face kind of looking down. And I think I'm gonna have both hands kind of kind of kind of just um clasped in front of her, just kind of looking at this thing. Although opposing that might be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> oh man, look, looking looking at it from this angle, you can see that I actually actually lengthened the arms quite a bit. You know, it's no it's no longer just like the perspective. It is just these are some very long arms. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Oh yeah. Apparently in Canada today, they, they've been having like net, network outages all day because one of the more popular communication networks, Rogers, is just down and out. Uh, I think my phone plan is, is a subsidiary of Rogers, which is weird to me. I don't, I, I, I was like, huh, no, no reception all day. I wonder why that is. And then I read the news and it took me a moment to remember, oh yeah, I don't actually use Rogers, but I have like a subsidiary or something. It was very strange. It, it felt very, very weird. No, that's not right either. I need to, like, move the elbow somehow if that's possible. There we go. Okay. And move the hand down a little bit. Almost kind of, like, near the belly button. There we go. Okay, we, we can work with this, I think. Okay, and then we can twist up palms a little bit so that they can join up more evenly. Okay. Hang on, we're gonna have to uh, be a little bit more extreme here. Just kind of centered on that middle kind of orange line running down the middle. <laughs> I, oh my goodness! Look. <laughs> okay, so from this angle, the get the legs get kind of mega messed up, which is interesting to know. Okay, there. This, this, I don't know, maybe this is like too low though. I think we can also do a little something with this, this part here. It's gonna be a very awkward kind of pose. I think, I, I, at least I think, I think that's okay. Then I think what might be interesting to do would be to angle the pose. I'm not sure what I did there. Okay. So, sometimes the the kind of like hardest thing about this is kind of like angling the pose correctly because you've got a bunch of different you've got a bunch of different ways to manipulate it, but it's all just it's all it's always a little difficult to manipulate the pose the first couple times around. Okay, so then we can probably turn it. No, uh, like this. There we go. Okay, and then go move the camera just around right there. Okay, what about maybe in no, maybe in this direction. What I'm, what I'm worried about here is that because, like, even though this is a very cool angle, I'm worried that just because of the angle, it is just gonna end up looking up her skirt, and that's just not what I'm about. 
Hmm. There has to be some kind of like happy middle point that we can reach. Okay. And then maybe if we zoom it in, then move it around like so. Okay, I think I think that's a decent pose. I, I feel like that's gonna I think that's gonna kind of uh that's kind of a good place to start. Alright. Man, yesterday, I, I think I post, I tweeted about this. I went looking for those abominable French sickle things. Um, I keep telling people about them, and they keep telling me they can't be that bad, right? I choose to err on the side of caution and believe they are awful. All right, I do. I, I, uh, I think just, and this is gonna be a little bit, um, maybe ostentatious, I guess. <laughs> But I do sincerely believe the, the kind of um, culture that we've kind of created around everything, you know, where, ev you know, there's a very popular saying in marketing that everybody is an influencer, right? And if you haven't heard of that before, it's it's become a very popular saying. And that's because essentially, thanks to the way that, um, you know, just how niche everybody's references for, you know, kind of following people are. I mean, heck, I've got, what, what is it now, 95 followers on twitch.tv.com.org slash edu. <laughs> that, that's like, that is 95 people who are willing to kind of just watch a little rice man make his ridiculous little drawings. And I am 100% grateful for that. But the fact that that has a market is kind of telling that, you know, you can't really predict you know, it, it's a very kind of a disparate, I guess would be the word. There's a very diverse range of what will appeal to people now because just due to the fact that we have content creation has become so much more accessible, you know. Um, time was anybody to get to like make videos, you need to get a proper video camera, you need to get studio equipment together, you needed to get a microphone, you need to get all kinds of this more nonsense, you know easily it'll it'll run you a, a, a thousand bucks or so but every day but nowadays everybody has a phone you know nowadays every, there are free art programs out there there's gimp there's medibank paint pro you know there's there's a bunch of different options for you to use and you could just become a png tuber with at ba with basically you know assuming you already had like computers and such penis delirious penis mysterious got bit by a skeet called a penis malarious i cannot believe i said said that shit holy fuck Hey Harvey, how you doing? <laughs> it's good to see you, man. How you been? It's been it's been a while. I, I feel like we haven't talked much. I should I should I should, I should we should talk more, dude. How you been? How goes it? Pretty good, pretty good. You know, winding down, end of the week. I'm I'm having a good time. I'm having fun doing stuff before art fight. Uh okay, so I feel like we should. Yes, yes, yes. Oh man, that reminds me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That reminds me. Uh, I saw you trying to start up a program the other day. Like, I think it was some kind of shooter. D did you end up? Did, have you? Have you? Ha do you have Sea of Thieves? I don't believe I do. Uh, I've heard about it though. I, I, I think it's like, uh, it's like pirate stuff, right? It's like Sea of Thieves nuts can fit in your mouth. Fuck it, it's the weekend. I'll give you that one. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> you're you're very saucy today, dude. You're very you're you're definitely kind of feeling spicy. I like it. I like it. I like the energy. You know, it's 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 good to see you feeling. I'm glad that you're feeling energetic. <laughs> okay. I just realized that this is basically a shy guy mask. That's cute. I've always liked the shy guys. I've always thought that they were like just little dudes. I feel like I would make an excellent shy guy. I've already got like uh, you know I've already got the kind of like almost white part down. I, I feel like I, all I need is like a little red jumpsuit and I'll be golden. What are you talking about? A shooter? Uh, oh right, it was worms. Did you ever get worms working? 
I saw you. I saw you were like shy guys are our prime dude material. Oh yeah, totally, 100% agree. Yeah, I saw you, I saw you trying to start it up, and I I was like, oh man, we've all been there. <laughs> yeah, I think War worm. I think it was worms. It's it's me. It's Riku. They put bugs in him. <laughs> yes, I did. Jesus Christ, it was awful. Ooh. Oh, but you did get it working though. Nice. You know, you can't always you don't you don't always walk away from those kind of a. Uh, Tribulations with with a working game, so I'm glad it, it, it did end up working end up working for you. Yeah, I I remember Worms. I remember I've never actually I don't think I've actually played Worms, but I remember playing a game like it after sacrificing seeing a black goat to a star god whose name I can't pronounce. Huh, neat. You know, people talk about sacrificing goats and such. I just like put a, put a knife through a tiny little ham sandwich. You know, I, I put some mint chutney on it. I, I get a little fancy with it. And that seems to appease, appease the gods just fine for me. You know, you don't have to go out. I, I, I always tell people, you don't have to go out and get a whole goat. You can, you can just, you can do more with less, you know? I've also been wasting all my time playing Song of Conquest. I've never heard of that one. What's that about? Yeah, I know. I I feel that about like an, a game eating up all your time, though. I've been playing Saints Row Three like crazy for some reason recently. I don't know. I think it was because I played it a lot as a teenager. But that game does just feel like coming home to an old friend. <laughs> Have you ever played Heroes of Might and Magic? I feel like I've heard of that, but I've never played it. Uh, no, I have not. Okay. Alright, so I think the way we're going to do this is that it's going to kind of wrap around her head a little bit here. There we go. But yeah, Heroes of Might and Magic. I do remember hearing about that. I feel like I've heard of that name before. I feel like maybe to get a kind of rounder mask, I should probably like increase the profile down here. I, I can't describe it if you don't know what Heroes of Might and Magic is. Um, uh, I'll try anyway. I don't. I, I mean, like, uh, like it is that is too much to cover. Hmm. Okay. So, how about it, How about we play a game of like Warmer and Colder? No, that's actually kind of. I mean, we could try that. We could try to play a game of like warmer and colder. So like, Heroes of Might and Magic. Actually, I got no idea what a game called that would be like. Also, I feel like this is kind of like this is going like directly into her ear. So I just I, that feels uncomfortable. Okay. No. Okay. I think we'll leave the mask as is for now and just kind of focus on everything else because we got a lot to cover here. Um, man. For some reason, I really like characters who have like very long necks. I feel like there's just something very cool about them. You know, re like really long neck joints and such. I, fe I feel like they're just like very creepy in a very cool way. Heroes of Might and Magic. I have heard of that. I, I, I swear I've heard of it, but I don't know what it's about, what it, what it does. I don't know why, but every time I feel, I feel like... Imagine chess, but my queen gets 20 moves because I saved up my 40 creation essence. Oh, okay, kind of like uh, Magic the Gathering then. But like with chess pieces. Interesting. Right. Yeah, I think I can kind of understand that. Not really. <laughs> Well, I tried. Uh, okay, so... Okay, so it is... Okay, so basically chess, but, like, with power-ups and such. Okay, I think I can... I think I can understand that. I think I can, uh, mentally... Mentally visualize that. You know, that's... That's not, like, a particularly challenging civilization. 
Okay, I can imagine civilization. We live in a society. <laughs> no. Okay. Um. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. You're trying. Very, I know you're. I know you're trying very hard to describe this, but I'm just goofing. <laughs> okay. Civ. All right. I am imagining Civ. I am rotating it within my ma mind. In my in my br in my mind's eye. Every time you go into battle, you go into a hexagonal chessboard with your army. Oh, neat. That reminds me a little bit of like how very old computer games would have something similar. Uh, I think like I think in like the older Ultima games, uh, which is probably <laughs> you have to build up your city to get resources, money, generate units. Oh, okay, so it's a little bit of a combo, huh? Yeah. <clears throat> I know in like older games, for example, you you ended up having like in Ultima, I think you ended up you kind of like had an overworld. And if you got into a fight with an enemy, you'd essentially be released into like a small kind of random map, I suppose, where you had to fight the enemy and then win and or lose. Instead of leaders, you have wielders who are basically wizards. Everything is basically a wizard if you, you know, ignore reality hard enough. I think I think that's how it works. Wizards, huh? And I am lucky that I've never met a wizard. I would be, I would be, I would like ask for an autograph or something. It would be embarrassing. All of your units generate a certain type of essence from order, chaos, creation, destruction, and arcane. Okay, so that's so that's heroes of might and magic. Okay, right. Okay, so and you're saying that uh, that war song game is like that? Okay, I can I can kind of I can kind of uh, understand that. I think I think I can. Like I said, I think I can visualize that. Other ribbon is gonna kind of just float on down from there. Uh, but that covers all the cool neck, all the cool neck musculature. Sad. Uh, no, that song. Of, okay, that song of conquest. You can cast as many spells as you want, so long as you have the essence for it. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so there wasn't like a whole part two. There wasn't a whole, whole part two. Okay, I was. That's good. It keeps things simple for me. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I like listening to people talk, but the like the thing is, right? I will listen to people talk, but I but past a certain point, it becomes very difficult for me to absorb. Like I, I can listen to you, to people talk, and I will kind of nod along with them. I will kind of engage in the conversation, but I won't really, like, uh, un unless it's like very thorough. I think sometimes I just kind of go on autopilot a little bit. <laughs> it's not my best trait, but it happens. Okay, done from there. Oh dear, a fire engine is outside. Not outside my apartment, uh, thankfully, no. The, I, I just mean kind of out there. One of my favorite spells is called Justice. Uh, because I can kill three dragons that cost 27,000 gold and seven glimmer weave, and casting that spell three times, costing 12 order and 12 chaos essence. I like your funny words, robot man. Now I'm just imagining like some dude absolutely fucking shit up to the with like waters of Nazareth in the background. God, I really liked Justice for a for a time in middle school. I I liked listening to the Waters of Nazareth album on YouTube. And one time when I was like hanging out with my friends and I played, I think it was Stress or something. No, I think it was Straight Up Waters of Nazareth that I also played for them. They were they th they were thought my phone was broken because I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that song. Um, I don't know if everybody who's listening to this has ever heard that song, but uh, a lot of Justice the band's musical style is very EDM, so it incorporates a lot of repetition, 
and they especially especially like repetition that sounds glitchy or like as if the audio equipment is broken and my friends straight up thought my phone was broken <laughs> there are four factions the rana our leon baria and the barony of loth i i'm uh, <laughs> barony of loth you know that's that's one s away from being an absolutely killer idea for like an empire of sloth the barony of sloth that's not, that sounds like something from like that sounds like a city a city themed after one of the seven deadly sins that's in a jrpg or something i am struggling with this hair i like this design a lot because it's very kind of a uh, geometric you know uh, I, Spasimoto does a lot of good stuff with like very sharp, thick lines, which I really admire. The Rana, frog people who... Ah, Rana, I, I, I see what they did there. Rana, frog, I, I see, I see. You, they, they're, they think they're funny, huh? People who ride giant spiders and birds into battle, also they love poisons, naturally, naturally. I think a better way to do this might be to kind of start down low than go up high. Yeah, I think I think that's a better idea. Okay. So I think around okay, the waist. This kind of sash here, this waist sash starts around here. Let me go over here. Arleon, the remnants of a fallen empire who have who have a giant goatman and murderous fairies. Huh. I feel like all fairies should be murderous to some degree. I feel like they, they'd have to be, right? Like, you have a lot of potentially impotent rage in a very tiny body. I, f I feel fairies would be very murderous just by nature. You know, you know Tinkerbell got some blood on, that, on her hands. Baria, technologically advanced merchant states who have muskets, mortars, flamethrowers, mines, and slaves. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things does not belong. Yeah. Baria. Man, I, I, I kind of want some biryani now. I don't want, if, you, if you don't know, there's an Indian dish, I believe. I believe it's Indian. I'm not entirely sure, but that, which is essentially this kind of stew called biryani, and it is mega tasty. Yeah, sometimes my university used to serve it, and I used to love eating it because I, it, it just went really, really good with rice. I really shouldn't stream when I'm so hungry. Like you know, I I I I, I do stream after work. I I got I got to work on the weekdays. And because of that, I usually I usually kind of end the day a little bit hungry, but I usually have myself some kind of pre-stream snack to uh, kind of compensate. Barony of Loth, our Leon, but with necromancy. Neat. Loth does sound like a dude who would be very into necromancy. Like you, whenever a dude has a single syllable name, and there is a. Th sound kind of just rolling around in there that's not that's either at the end of the or that's either at the end or in the middle you just know that dude's gonna be into some fun, into some freaky shit all right you, it's got it's got it's kind of a tell you know a bit of a red flag if you will <coughs> i kind of want want to make the hands kind of long and spindly as well and this poor girl is gonna end up looking a little bit like the other mother <laughs> Okay. Take, take a sip of water. Barry is my favorite faction because of the pioneers and artificers, not because of the slaves. I wasn't gonna say, but thank you for clarifying. <laughs> okay. Then I don't think she wears gloves. No, it is just barehanded. <clears throat> okay. No. Oh, 
Hopefully, unlike Tooth and Tail, I'll be able to show it to you on Discord at some point. I mean, yeah, man, we were just fighting for our fucking lives that one time, huh? God. Yeah, Discord, Discord, there's no issue quite like Discord technical issues. Because if you get technical issues on Discord, not only are you kind of frustrated and angry as you normally would be during normal technical issues, but you also have to contend with the fact that whatever is messing with you is probably also messing with your ability to communicate with your friends. So it does feel like you're kind of scared and alone being murdered in a room. <laughs> Then over there, then and here. There we go. Hmm. But yeah, that does sound interesting. Oh yeah. The other day, right, <coughs> I was reading through a this article, and I don't know why, but recently there's just been a lot of funny news that have been going around. You know, there's the, that whole thing happening with Brexit. Well, no, what, why the fuck did I say Brexit? Brexit happened like years and years ago, <laughs> and it's still very funny to this day. That was such a dumbass move. <laughs> But no, I'm talking about like the thing with the PMs resigning, you know, not to kind of break immersion for anybody watching this in the future and, you know, kind of dating this video to a certain time point. But at, I think like there was like a, I think like there's 60 or so, 60 odd dudes who have resigned from the English parliament at that point. At this point, I believe in time, <laughs> which is just mm, chef's kiss. Very good. Because the thing is, right, with a lot of Western governments, the the kind of like main governing body it kind of imploding doesn't necessarily cause anything to change you know uh what I, what basically happens is that like you know people say like oh this is shameful oh the country's shutting down this sucks we need to get new leaders etc cetera, etc cetera. but nothing actually happens you know nothing's fundamentally going to change and while that is in its own way kind of tragic it does also mean that you can poke at the whole event guilt-free and just kind of laugh it off. I mean, my god, they're, they're thinking about nominating a very... And I hate to be mean to animals, but a very incompetent mousing cat that's in that's just kind of there in the British Parliament. You know, there's been talks about electing it. You know, as a bit, as a joke, as a goof. And this is the kind of... I think this is the kind of thing that the world needed right now. <laughs> Okay. Then over here with the other hand. Yeah, I don't think anybody's fi anybody's five-year plan kind of took this into account. You know, some do. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it, I don't think I don't think five-year plans have been a thing since COVID. You know, I, I feel like nowadays it just kind of planning to, into the future in any meaningful capacity is just kind of a minefield, so to speak. Because fucking who had, <laughs> like, I, I know like a, some Filipino dictator also got COVID recently, like, who had that on their bingo card, right? Who, who could have seen any of this coming? I mean, unless a five-year plan involved get, getting that guy COVID, and in, in, in which case, I, I bet it's going swimmingly for them. Yeah. You know, you know, another good thing that I've been reading is that apparently I, I, the longer that NFTs keep going, the longer that I can keep making fun of them harder because it is just so deliciously bad. You know, uh, this morning I read that apparently in median, you know, the when you when we talk about statistics here, right, we try to be we keep, try to keep in mind, like the proper terms that we're using. So the median price for an nft you know not not like those like super millionaire types you know nothing like that 
but for the median NFT, has fallen from one thousand seven hundred dollars to a little over four hundred, which again is just very good. I hope it keeps imploding. Yeah, they actually did do a study right on why people start buying NFTs, and naturally the number one answer is just because they want money. But what's sad is that some of these guys like go into this whole thing because they want to feel a sense of community with other people who kind of get these things. Which I imagine is also why a lot of them stay in that way, you know. But it's just very difficult to feel sympathy for those fools. <laughs> Oh yeah, I also learned that apparently the U.S. has a fucking coin task force. Yeah, that's not that's not like an exaggeration or like a euphemism or anything. They have a literal task force devoted to the to coins, and that is because at the moment, I think it's like forty-eight billion or so dollars in coins are currently kind of just not circulating. We don't. We know where they are, right? Like the thing is, it's not like they're missing. We know where they are. They're they're in like normal households. They're like in in American households. In the U.S., there's a there's four point five forty eight point five billion dollars worth of coins just kind of sitting around people's houses. Because you know nowadays you don't actually need coins for too many things. You know unless you have like a coin operated laundromat at your apartment building or something. Chances are you can just pay for everything with a card or, you know, some kind of like smart pay, stripe, what have you, that kind of thing. I know here in Canada, we have this thing called tap, which is, as the kind of name implies, you just kind of tap your card to the uh, point of sale terminal. I always like point of sale terminals because if you abbreviate it, it makes a very rude word. But uh if you if you tap your card to the point of sale terminal it charges your card and bobs your uncle you're good to go you don't need to worry about that anymore and it's handy it's very useful i like it you know it's it it, it saved me a lot of headaches in carrying currency i don't like carrying a whole lot of currency on me you know i'm i'm not expecting to get mugged but i just it kind of feels weird knowing that like i'm just carrying around like 60 dollars or something you know it's like weird I can't explain- I had, I don't have a good explanation for why, but it just does feel weird. Uh, I was talking about something. Right, the- Yeah, the 40, the 48.5 billion in friggin' lost cash that's just in US homes. <laughs> so yeah, ne try, check out, try checking underneath your couch every now and again. You know, you, know, you might find like a small amount of riches in just cheap in just ch cheap change. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember some, they were talking about this story about a dude in I think it was New York, who was struggling to get his laundry done because he needed quarters, but he went to like three different bank banks and none of them had, you know, coins. These sleeves are supposed to be much wider. Uh, not, not like in terms of like this wide, but like it longer. I think I'm thinking of longer. The word I am thinking of is longer. And I hate on kind of length, width, depth, all that kind of stuff, because I feel like you have to, it makes you feel kind of like a dumbass whenever you have to do it, because I feel like every, I have to think very, very consciously. Okay, I'm, good. I'm just going to get rid of the kind of sash mockup we had before. I don't know if it'll be fully visible. But yeah, every time I have to think about like length, depth, and width, it's like when you have to check your hands to remember which way is right and left, right? Like, you understand that you're a smart, capable person. You understand that, that, that like, this is not reflective of your intelligence at all. But nevertheless, it infuriates you to know that you have to use like the same trick you use as a five-year-old to remember how, which way is left and right. Yeah, I think I think this kind of like little section here is just her elbow. So I'm just gonna kind of go like this. There we 
go. Okay, and this this I feel like that she must she's got to like starch the sleeve or something because it's just, it do, it does seem to kind of just. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, I think I was focusing a little too much on this one and not enough on this one over here. Oh yeah. Uh, if you haven't heard of, about this, apparently... Okay, so first of all, I think the current World Cups are being held in... Are, not right now. Apparently they've postponed it to November. Usually the World Cup, I think, takes place sometime in the... in spring or something, but this time around they've uh, chosen to delay it to sometime in November, I believe. Because right at, uh, right now the World Cup is being held in Qatar. And if you don't know about Qatar, it gets very hot there. <laughs> like, it gets very, very hot there. <laughs> so, you know, they don't want their little uh, ball guys to just be kind of dipping, dipping out mid-game because of heat stroke. So they've decided to postpone it until, until November when the weather calms down a little bit. And, you know, it gets a little bit cooler. And... Apparently, they're gonna try using AI to referee the game, which I can just see going f swimmingly. I'm not gonna lie, right? I talk a lot about martial arts on this channel, I talk a lot about all that, but I think there's- holy shit, seagulls outside my window. Anyway, uh, I was talking about something. <laughs> yeah, my number one weakness, I get, I get easily distracted by seagulls. <laughs> Anyway, uh, right. Football fans, soccer fans, what what have you. They can be surprisingly violent. <laughs> like, I don't know if, if it's just like a thing where I grew up, but uh, football fans regularly essentially cause miniature riots in, outside, and around the stadium at regular intervals during game season. So it was... So, you know, you'd hear about, like, a car getting flipped over or some shit outside the stadium and, like, 15 people injured or something. And I'd be like, yeah, that's far for the course. It reminds me how, like, of that, um, Curse of the Colonel, that's a thing in Japan. Yeah, if you haven't heard of that, um... Japan is very big on baseball. And... They're also rather big on superstition, to some extent. You know, I, obviously it varies from person to person, but to some extent there is, like, a penchant for superstition, especially in sports. So what ended up happening is that I don't remember which team, I think it was the Tigers, maybe. Uh, one of the teams that was very famous at the time was having kind of a winning streak, and the fans naturally got all riled up. They, they, they were happy, they were happy as a lark, they were just, like, tearing shit up. And one of the casualties in the, in this kind of, uh... Jubilation was a statue of Colonel Sanders, the KFC mascot, and apparently a real ass dude. <laughs> it was it was until very recently that I learned that the that the Colonel was like a real guy, like an actual dude. <laughs> Alright, I didn't know that he was like a dude like a guy, like like a like a guy that existed. I knew he was a guy, but I didn't know that he existed in real life. <laughs> All right, like I didn't know that until very recently. I, I figured it was kind of like the Wendy's girl, and oh wait, no, the Wendy's girl is also real. I think I think it was like the like the founder's daughter or something. I don't have the best for track record for this kind of thing. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys. I don't have the best track record with like mascot lore and shit. But um, right, they threw a statue of Colonel Sanders, who was in fact a real ass dude, into a river in someplace, I don't remember where. But after that happened, their team just kept losing and losing and losing games. So they started to blame it on the on the colonel basically having a grudge and coming out to ruin their games. <laughs> because he was pissed they threw him in the river that one time. <laughs> Man, you just gotta know that that whoever, that whoever kind of like roots for that team in Japan has gotta have some, a very complicated relationship with KFC. <laughs> like it, it, it's kind of like when you see a big dog in the street and you're like, oh puppy. They did eventually fish him back out. Oh nice. 
which is hilarious <laughs> yeah they're like sorry dog man can you call off the go weird ghost magic shit we kind of want to win at baseball again <laughs> god yeah they did fish him out i think i think that was something that i read about god yeah hey bunny how you doing but yeah anyway i th i think like that's still a thing to this game to this day uh God, I love, I really do love, like, sports superstitions. Because it, ultimately they're very harmless, you know? Also, I keep forgetting that I need to draw, like, what, like what's below first and then what's f higher up. But yeah, God, they really did fish him out, huh? Rescue operation. Saving, saving the colonel. <laughs> Colonel is one of those words that doesn't feel like it should be pronounced the way it is. Uh, if you have a, like a rudimentary knowledge of English, it doesn't. You, you feel like you would say it colonel, or colonel, or cur or col col colonel, or something like that. But no, it's colonel, like the corn. It's just very weird to me. I I don't like that. I don't. I mean, that's what you get, obviously, right? When you borrow words from other languages. I imagine that it's German or something originally. Colonel. Colonel does sound like a like a German word. I, I don't imagine it's French because then it would have more vowels. I think sergeant is French. Not sure. Ah, what the hell do I know about military ranking? I'm a bag of rice! Oh yeah. <laughs> Here's another funny thing. Uh, Alright, so inflation's been hitting us all pretty hard right, lately, right? It's not just me, right? You know, I, things are get, becoming more expensive. A trip to the supermarket costs almost three quarters, like 75% more than it used to a month ago. It's real bad, basically. And everybody's feeling it because apparently some zoo in Japan recently got hit by the inflation so hard that they had to switch to a cheaper brand of fish to feed their animals. And apparently the, fin the penguins who they usually feed with the fish straight up refused to eat the f cheaper fish. They kind of turned out their little penguin noses up at it and it's hilarious. <laughs> you turned these penguins into gourmets and now you're paying for it dearly. Literally, with with money. <laughs> I remember one time I saw a... I think it was a Twitter post of... Essentially, apparently like these penguins, right? Uh, you know, as kind of like a bid for the guests, I suppose. Um, the park staff actually made this board about the very complex social relationship between the penguins because penguins are very social animals and with all the with all the kind of inter intra species drama that that implies so you had like penguins who were like divorced you had penguins who had who had left for and lost you, you had you had penguins who got dumped it was brutal <laughs> It, it was like it was like scrolling through an acquaintance's Facebook relationships history page. Some of them were pretty funny though, I'm not gonna lie. Okay. Here. There we go. <laughs> It is a shame that the penguins didn't eat the fish, though. You know, the the zookeepers did try to like feed them good fish, which is awesome. You know, it it, sh it shows that they care for the animals, but it, but it did come back to bite them in the ass to some extent, which is unfortunate. You know, you try to do the right thing, and the world never stops punishing you for it. That's how it is sometimes. Well, not the world, not the world in general, just these penguins who you were trying to make more comfortable. <laughs>
Yeah, the world is kind. The penguins are not. You know, I think I think I think Hegel said that, and I have that quote framed on my wall in a supermarket frame, frame that I fished out of three dumpsters. The the frame itself was split into like three different parts. This is a bit, by the way. I didn't actually do that. I did used to go picking up stuff out of the trash a lot as a kid, though. I remember when I was like, what, seven, eight, I fished a this entire kind of like painting, which looked a lot like the Starry Night, but probably was just some kind of like look-alike out of a neighbor's trash, and I brought it home, and my mom was not ex was very like accepting of it, but at the same time, you could tell that like she was not happy to have something literally fished out of the trash in her home. <laughs> I did it again in high school. Um, for some reason, people used to dump very interesting stuff around my neighborhood, which is how I managed to uh, cop a uh, one of those like mannequin bodies. I guess it would just be a mannequin, right? It's like one of those like headless mannequins with, that's just like the waist and the shoulders and the neck, kind of like that. I I ended up getting one of the, getting getting one of those out of the garbage, and I ended up using it for an art piece. And my art professor asked me where I found it, and I just didn't say anything. You know, it's that's what you call serendipity. It's it's not it, it's not a it's not like I was just picking stuff out of the garbage for fun. That that garbage pick was a thing of destiny. You know, I was meant to find that disembodied body. Well, no, I guess it would just be beheaded body. Disembodied body is not a thing, I think. I don't think that's a thing that you can have. Okay, so I think I think the way this is is that it's got like the skirt has like a ton of frills down here. I can do that later with a lace brush, but for the moment I want to focus on the skirt a little bit. So it looks like it has a white rim. Oh yeah, something funny that happened today. Um, I get lunch from this place that's pretty close to my work. Um, and, you know, they have just the top hits or something. I don't know, 80s classics or, some, or something like that playing in the background of the store because, you know, the... I, don't, I never understood when we decided it was okay for stores to play music loud enough that you could barely hear the cashier. Not to sound like like a grouchy old man, but that that sucks really bad. I really wish they didn't play music so loud in restaurants and stores, but you know that's not really up to me, is it? In any case, they were playing they were playing the, that song, um, Stacy's Mom. And I realized in that moment, I'd, I'd listened to the TikTok um, dad version of it. Um, if you don't know, recently on TikTok, or I guess not recently anymore, I imagine it's at least a couple months old now. Uh, basically, some band covered made a cover of Stacy's mom, where instead of talking about the, um, the guy's girlfriend's mom, they were talking about the guy's girlfriend's dad. <laughs> And it is really good. <laughs> it's a very good cover. I it's it's it, it matches it rhyme for rhyme. It, it's very good. It it keeps track of the syllables and everything. It's good. It's very good. And I realized that I'd never actually listened to the song Stacy's Mom before. <laughs> I'd only ever listened to the cover <laughs> that had the dad in it. So I'm like, oh, so this is how the original experience was. Yeah. I'm the kind of, kind of person who accidentally listens to a cover of the song first and thinks the original is kind of whack. I'm that guy. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not exactly a good trait to have, you know. I um this this happened a lot to me because I used to listen to this one YouTube channel called Scott Tune Network a lot. And the guy, the person running that account, um some, a person named Jer, they cover a lot of songs in the, the whole point of the channel is to cover songs and make turn them into a ska song. 
And I like Ska, so, you know, naturally I'm, very, I'm all about that channel. But, like, they, they cover, ended up covering so many songs that I ended up listening to the Ska versions of the song first, and then the normal version later, and every time I listened to the normal version, it just sounded wrong. Yeah, that, that is the risk of, like, being a cover-heavy a cover heavy person. <laughs> <sighs> yawning. Yawning is very interesting because I, I know that for a lot of vocal exercises, they actually tell you to yawn quite a bit before starting because I know that that, that yawning, like, you know, doing a full kind of uh, like that yawn. That probably sounded very strange, that sound that I just made. Don't worry about it too much. But it's, I've heard that yawning like that, like, you, you know, doing a proper kind of a, it's, you've had a restful night of sleep kind of yawn. I know, hashtag can't relate or whatever. But doing one of those yawns actually loosens up your vocal cords quite a bit. You know, it relaxes you and kind of keeps you in your natural range. I think I might have done this a little too low. And over here. Okay, then it looks like there's some additional lace kind of going from this kind of back part. Kind of wrapping around through here. Drink some water. Oh yeah. Apparently today was the birthday of some of some friggin' toy from must have been the 80s or 60s or something, called the Erector Set. Now before we all go around making dick jokes. I, I will say that I feel like we need more toys like that nowadays because, you know, back back in the day, you used apparently they were like these toys that help you build stuff, you know. Uh, an erector set is like a a you know they give you little bits of metal that you can kind of adjust into different structures. I'm pretty sure that that's how it worked, but essentially it was kind of like that. It was like a little home building kit. Where you, where you could turn the metal structures into anything. And <clears throat> I feel like we desperately need more stuff like that because I remember that I was, one of my favorite toys as a kid was actually my set of Tinker Toys. And if you don't know what those are, they're kind of like Legos, but made of wood and kind of like more about sticks and axles. So you, you used to have like these little kind of donut shaped axles, which had a hole here and kind of like running across the sides here. And you used to have dowels of varying length and you could you connect these together to kind of just build whatever you wanted. You know, make a little Jenga tower or something, I don't know. But the whole point of it, it was that, you know, it kind of like got your children thinking and got your kids kind of like interested in construction to seeing what they could make. And I think that we are missing a lot of that today. I feel like you know, it's been a while since I stepped into a toy aisle, but I feel like we just don't have stuff like that anymore. It's not so, it's not so much in vogue anymore. And you know, you can you can partly blame like you know, the kind of cost of making such toys, you know. Nowadays, if you want to get money from children, you can basically just crank out a baby baby sensory video type app and just blast it on social media and eventually the kids will download it and you'll just use their phones to mine for Bitcoin or some shit, I don't know. But I do feel like we are missing an emphasis on toys like that. And again, I probably have something of a bias here because again, I just love my Tinker Toy set, but I don't know. I, I just feel like we're missing something like that nowadays. I mean, we have Minecraft though. You know, Lord knows the, ki the, the kids are doing wonders in that weird little block game, but 
It's not the same, you know? You can't feel the, a Minecraft block in your hand. You can't, you can't feel like the 18 foot, I don't know, tower that you made in Minecraft out of diamond or something. You can't feel that in your hand unless you 3D printer or something, and that's a whole other debacle. I really do hope that 3D printing become... Well, I, first of all, I hope that 3D modeling becomes easier, or at least that I learn how to do it. But I also hope that 3D model, 3D printing becomes a little bit more accessible because I feel like there could be a great kind of mini home industry that I feel like that would be a very cool little thing to do. Man, I wonder if there's like a channel on Twitch that's some that's some dude just like randomly printing stuff out of a 3D printer and he just ha kind of has it just kind of droning on in the background. You know, you t you tune in at 3 a.m. and somebody's all somebody's like uh, somebody's 3D printing one of those like little smiley faces with the eyes eyes crossed into X's. I don't know. I just feel like it'd be interesting. You know, pe people will like watch anything. I remember there was a Twitch stream of a particular highway. I think somebody used a CCTV camera. In the hot near the highway to show a specific strip of land in one specific area and it, it i don't know why but a lot of people were into it a lot of people really like that channel nobody that i know but i know that it, it had a ton of concurrent viewers for some reason and i think it was it was just because the bid was very funny also i'm kind of noticing now that the midsection is like right here so I think I'm gonna have to like tighten I'm gonna have to tighten this part up. Oh yeah. Yesterday while while, while I was out hunting hunting French sickles. Which is a phrase that I cannot believe I can say. Um, while I was out hunting French skulls, I ran into this little convenience store, and I was hoping that they would have some, but they didn't. But what they did have were the... And I found them in their kind of icebox, was these little cubes, and it turned out that this lady had essentially made little bits of cheesecake. She made a cheesecake. And I'm guessing with like some big knife or something, she cut it into bite-sized square pieces and stuck them in the freezer. So, you know, if you wanted a little snack or something, you could just like grab one, pay for it, and just kind of pop it in your mouth. And that was a little bite of cheesecake right there for you. You know, not too much, not too little. Just a little taste of cheesecake for you, you know, to kind of juice you through the day. I don't know how dependent you, you you guys are on cheesecake. I'm not particularly dependent on it. Um, you know, I like to think that I'm I can resist the temptations of the cheesecake pretty easily. But uh, that was not yesterday. That I I, I I bought one of those little squares and I popped it in my mouth and it was so fun. Um, because it's chilled in the fr or fr freezer, what you essentially get is this little kind of this very kind of cool. Almost like ice cream cake-ish texture that r was really a big help in the summer heat. Yeah, I don't I don't walk around outside too much nowadays. You know, I, I've got I've got other things I need to take care of at home, but I do occasionally just get the urge to just kind of walk around the city sometimes. You know, and yesterday while I was like searching for the French clothes, I was like, you know. I, sh I shouldn't take the bus for this. I should just try to look around, see what I can find, etc. And I'm glad I did, because then I got to try that cheesecake bite. <sighs> I mentioned earlier that I've been playing Saints Row 3 again, and boy oh boy, it is much easier than I remember. <laughs> I think as a kid, I just didn't understand that, like, you couldn't just tank shots. <laughs> like, especially early on out, until you get, like, the upgrade that lets you, like, ignore bullet damage or something. Uh, early on out in the game, you will be running away from people because you just cannot take too much punishment. 
And <clears throat> I don't think little kid me understood that. Because I remember I used to just like waste hours and hours just on a specific mission because I didn't understand that you had to dodge when people started shooting at you. <laughs> no, I was like 16, 17. I wasn't that little, but I, but still, I should have known better by that point. No, I was like 15 or something, I think. You know, I, I, th I think I remember one time, um, and I regret this a lot. Essentially, one time, one summer, I basically spent the whole time just kind of cooped up in my house playing video games, just kind of whiling the days away, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if that's how you have the most fun, that's how you have the most fun. Not, not passing judgment. But I don't think I was actually having fun. <laughs> you know, I was just kind of cooped up in there. I think, like, rather than having fun, it's more accurate to say that I was just, like, checking off boxes on video games like you know people often kind of bemoan their huge steam libraries knowing that they'll probably never download any of the games they have on there because you know they just have so many and there's just not enough time to get to them all i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing you know i don't think that there, that you need to you know obviously if you buy something you do it with the intention to eventually use it but I don't think it's a bad thing if you buy something and don't end up using it that much. Because, you know, I would much rather that you just... I, personally, I'd much rather just, like... And it's, this is especially true ever since I, I joined, like, the Humble Bundle thing. Um, I'd rather just, like... Have the game in my library and have it just kind of guilt trip me a little bit every time every time I pass me, it passed me by. Rather than, you know, wasting potentially ten or more hours of my life on something that I didn't even want to play much to begin with. And because I'm a bit of a perfectionist, you know I usually spend much longer on games than I should. Am I a perfectionist? I don't know. I might be. I might. I have a little bit of a perfectionist in me, you know. Just a dash. You know, it bothers me when my obligations are left undone. Okay, there we go. Two. Now we do the hair, which is going to be difficult. Or maybe not, actually. Hang on. Hang on, I might, I might have um, spoken too soon. This might be not so difficult after all. That's nice. I always like it when something is easier than I expected. You know, the other day at work, I um, they put me on... Recently, I've been struggling quite a bit at work. I'm not too familiar with the task that they're asking of me. Uh, for my own privacy reasons, I won't get too much about what it is, but essentially, I've just been having a bit of a hard time just doing my job recently, but that's that started to change, and I've noticed that it's mainly because the ones that they did give, give me were, for some reason, just some of the hardest ones in there. You know, in terms of just, like, gathering stuff, um, you know, in, in terms of just, like, logistics, they were some of the har hardest ones in there. And that's good for me to realize, because I was, like, taking it really hard. <laughs> you know, now I feel much better. I feel much more capable. just kind of have like a plain dome back here with just like a couple of lines kind of indicating where the hair is flowing. How's that look without the model? Oh, neat. Well, 
Although I am missing something here. There we go. Okay. Then from there, are we missing any details? Bows, we've got the braids, we've got the shy guy mask. Got the, oh, we've got the dress. Seems to be some decent details. We can do that up with some painting style later. Okay, I think I'm gonna lower the size of the lines here a little bit. And we can just spend a couple minutes on cleanup and then we can get to the coloring phase. I should drink some water. <laughs> you know, I've been hearing about... During COVID, right? Did you guys ever have to have to download those, like, COVID monitoring apps? I never had to do that because, um... For various reasons. I, firstly, like, again, the place where I live just was not hit by hard as COVID as other places. And second, because I didn't really have a job where that was needed. But I know that a lot of them are kind of trying to retain their user base on, you know, COVID is... We, people are saying it is. I sincerely do not believe it. But people are acting like it is. So, some, so, so a lot of people kind of agree with them. I don't know. It's a, it's a very messy situation, but a lot of people think that COVID is over. So a lot of these these apps have been kind of on the offensive trying to find ways to add value to their product now that they no longer have to have the kind of like advantage that now people need COVID monitoring apps. Well, you know, they might still need it, but again, not getting into that right now. Anyway, a lot, a lot of them have just kind of turned them, tried to... Uh, Retain their user base by becoming just normal health apps. You know the type. The they like. Is it just me or this arm, or is this arm like way too wide? No, that should be fine. Okay. Right here. I think, hang on. Even wider. <laughs> what does that look like even? Oh, that's, that. okay, yeah, that's a bit much. Okay, so maybe with the mesh transform a little bit, we can, we can take care of that. Let me try that again. How about... There we go. No, we need even more of these. We need more... There we go. How about, how's that? Eh. No, that's, that also looks wrong though. All right, what about... Okay, maybe with the skew transform this would be... Nope. And no. No, that's not gonna work. All right, how about perspective? Any perspective is, is the way to do it. No, that's also not, not that doesn't feel right either. All right, we'll brute forcing it with a mesh transformation then. I can work with that. Hmm. 
Now that I've worked with Live 2D, all this mesh transformation stuff just seems much more intuitive. You know, I guess that's, I suppose you could call that a fringe benefit, but... Eh, I'd rather just be better at Live 2D. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a while since I touched life to the I should get back into it one of these days. You know, not to say that this rice forum mine ain't perfect, but uh it's it's just good to challenge yourself and do stuff that pushes your boundaries every now and again. Not always, but every now and again. You know I've 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 said I've said this before, I think like my work environment is the one where they kind of encourage you to be in your comfort zone when you're outside of your comfort zone. And again, this is a very good kind of teaching, but it's also make it also makes you uncomfortable. So you're not exactly getting the best of both worlds. You get, you're getting the best of one world, but maybe not both. I told this to my friend the other day. One of these days, right? I'm going to assume. All right, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm going to come forth with this. I love. I only recently discovered that you could eat cookie dough that you know supermarket cookie dough straight out of the packet. I I didn't know that before. I didn't know you could do that, but you can, and it's delicious. I'm so mad that I didn't know I didn't know about it sooner. However. I also recognize that if at any point they stop making the dough in such a way that it's safe to eat raw, even if it doesn't contain, you know, even, like if it contains raw eggs or something and it says that you can no longer eat it raw, I am just going to, I am just going to be halfway through one of those little cookie dough logs. I'm going to read that package and immediately I'm going to fucking explode Looney Tunes style from the sheer hyper salmonella that I've given myself. <laughs> It'll be quite spectacular. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. How should I do this? I think I've got an idea for how I want this to look, but it's gonna be a little bit later in the coloring stage, I think. For now, we're ready to move on. I'm gonna do a quick stretch. Relax my shoulders. I really am quite sleepy. I just kinda wanna keep my eyes closed right now. Not that I have eyes, but you know what I mean. You know, my proverbial eyes, my metaphorical eyes, I wanna keep them closed for a little bit. The eyes of my heart. The eyes of the soul. <sighs> okay. I could put in some eye drops or something. I've been getting better about my sleeping schedule. I, I am proud of that. I have been getting better about it recently, but I've been slipping as well. And uh, I can't let that happen or else I'm toast. Or, you know. I, and I'll just be tired all the time again, and I really don't want that to happen. Okay, so the whole dress is... Okay, so the top part and everything. Papa. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Papa. Papa Artiga. Uh. Yeah. How are you doing, Toast? How, how, how's your day been? Are you having fun? Are you... Are you eating well? Here. This part is white, this part... Wait, no. I've got it wrong. This part is white, this part is white, this part is white. Well, insulting me already? <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that's an insult. I literally just asked how you were doing. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know why you're taking that aggressively. <laughs> you called me toast. I said I'm toast. Wait, did I call you toast? I'm sorry. Okay, I might have done that. I, I'm sorry. I'm a little out of it. 
I'm very sleepy, you see. <laughs> if I did do that, I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Not in the most awake state of mind today. Okay. Yeah, that little cat emoji is exactly how I'm feeling these days. Oh, hype sus. Oh, it's doing- it's- it's- it's saying I'm sussy. How dare it. I am the most normal man in all of the tri- in all of the American continents. Simpsons voice. Ha ha. <laughs> I am the most normal man ever. They have been, they have tried to make guys more normal than me, but they have just failed miserably. I, I, I am simply irreplaceable. I'm surprised you heard that, Rabbit. <laughs> right. I like it when a character has a very simple color scheme. It makes my life so much easier. Okay, then we'll fill that with lace. These are also kind of this dark color. Go. There we go. I was laughing at you, I can barely hear. <laughs> but it's my brain, not the audio. Okay, cool. Th thanks for clarifying that. And I, I was spooked for a second, but thank you for clarifying. Uh, okay. What did I just crop out an entire finger? Oh wait, no. I think I think because my line work was thicker before I adjusted it, I think that's what kind of made it that like that. Well, that's easily fixed. Here. Am I missing anything? Neck there, part of the neck here. Over here. I've always wondered how, like, I know there are ceramic masks, right? Um, like masks made out of ceramic materials. I don't. I think those are a thing. I'm like ninety percent sure those are those are real and exist. But I've always wondered how they kind of fit so snug onto people's faces. Because you know, ceramics are heavy, or or at least heavier than you know most materials. So it's hard for me to imagine a kind of scenario where it can be made light enough to kind of wear comfortably on your face like that. You know, I'm 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 definitely not planning to go full Phantom of the Opera one of these days or anything, but I've always wanted to try one on and see, you know, how's it feel. They're very, they're still heavy even if you make them thin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My point exactly. Like, y you don't just make it not heavy, right? Oh, that's in a different color. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna want to bust up, brush, increase the brush size. Okay, so I think maybe. Okay, no, that's not showing up, like, at all. So I think we are gonna have to go for... Oh, hey, braids. I didn't remember I had those downloaded. Zippers. Oh, well, this would have been useful a few friggin' weeks ago. Chain. It's always cool kind of rediscovering what nutty little brushes you have in here. You know, it's, it's fun kind of going back and figuring out, Oh, hey, yeah, well, we've got this in here. I forgot we had that. I mean, I guess it's also about, like, how, in what context you're wearing them, right? So, like, I imagine that wearing the one mask for a, 
for like a party where you're not expected to move much because everybody else is wearing a ceramic mask also. I don't imagine that's nearly as hard as like... Friggin... I don't know. Vigilante justice. It's like when you go to clean your room and find every neat thing you have. That's exactly the feeling, buddy. That is exactly the feeling. You know, I want you to picture me in my in your in your mind's eye, just kind of hunched over playing playing on like a Nintendo DS that I somehow unearthed after three years of not using it. And okay. It's very weird to me working with these saturated colors because I'm if you if you haven't seen much of my art, I'm a very I, I love like thick heavy lines. I love like big saturated loud colors. It's it, it's something that I love to do. It's something that I like to do. And so going for very kind of light delicate colors is not really my modus operandi. But I have my fun. You know, I, I it, it's always nice when I do get to do it. Okay. And I forgot the hair here. Hang on. I got an idea for how to make this soul. Alright, so what I'm thinking is right around... And I'm going to turn off the part for this here. There we go. Okay, almost have it. I almost have it. Hang on. Here, here, and here. Now, what I'm going to want to do... Okay, I think I know what I need to do. I think I know a better way to do this. So I'm going to copy and paste the, the drawing layer, and I'm going to make it so that the hands are kind of on top of the head. So like there's going to be two layers. I'm going to call this... Okay, so this back one will have like the head and everything. I don't know if you could see that, but I just I literally named the layer head and everything, and this one will be just hands. Okay, so for the just hands layer, we're gonna want to erase everything that's kind of above the hands. That includes this. So that includes this, 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 this. Actually, it'll be faster to use a marquee tool. All of this. Okay, there we go. And then, you know, for these more kind of precise spots, we can just use the wand select tool. Okay. Gotta remember that I'm selecting an area to erase. Uh, okay, so marquee. That. So what this is going to create is effectively like a two-layer effect, where you see how uh, how I just like have nothing here now. Um, that way, wait, no, that also won't work because I need to have. The line art also beneath this layer. Okay, I've got an idea for how to do this as well. Uh, okay, so create selection. Let's go, kind of go up here and boop. Okay, now we should be good to go. So now, if I draw something, kind of. 
here between those two layers. So say, you know, maybe something that's very easy to kind of see, a very kind of like high contrast object that is going to be very recognizable, very iconic, very easily visible. I'm going to draw an Among Us, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah. With this little Among Us ass proof. Uh, you can see that I can basically just like make a shiny object there. Oh, hang on. Okay, I'm glad I threw this little test Among Us because that doesn't look right. Hang on. Okay, I, I feel like I got an idea for what I gotta do. Alright, so if I take this out... Okay, so the, everything is still there for the moment. Uh, okay, so I think this time it's like I gotta go the opposite way around and just deselect everything that I want to keep. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Man, you're really losing it. What do you mean? I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling fantastic. I got the dragon en energy in me. You say I'm losing it every other week. I, I, feel, I feel like I'm, I've never actually lost it. I feel like I've, I keep gaining things. I feel I, I feel like I keep gaining, gaining power and inertia. And someday I will become the catastrophic comet that tears the universe in half. Okay. Now let's try this. Alright. Hang on. No, it's still not going doing it correctly. I don't. Hmm. How about? Okay, I've got another idea. Okay, so I'm gonna create a selection from layer from this one going to copy the what's in the vector layer and then I'm going to paste it up here. And hopefully that's going to kind of work it out. No, come on. What? Oh, wait. I, hang on. I think I know what I got to do now as well. All right. Uh Okay, I can delete this one. Copy and paste this layer here. Rasterize it. Again, kind of just select what's in just hands. Oh, wait, no. No, wait. Okay, no, no, no. I gotta go back a couple of steps, I think. Okay, I think I've got an idea for how to do this now, properly. Okay, so we've got just hands, head and shoulders. Okay, so okay, we're at this stage so far. That's fine. We can we can work with that. So only we have one more layer. Okay, we can do this. I understand how to do this now. Okay, so I'm gonna need to duplicate this. Uh, set it as a raster layer. Then put this down here, just below just hands. And then put this one on top of just hands, but I'm gonna need to create a selection. Invert it. And then delete that. Okay, I'm, I, could, I should expand it by like, or like decrease it I suppose for this one. There we go. Okay. 
That should preserve everything pretty nicely. Did I already cut it? I don't... I think I already cut it, okay. Um, Alright, un unless I'm mistaken, which I very well might be. I've been wrong before. Um, This should work just perfectly now. I will take that. That works. You have. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I've been wrong before. I'm okay with admitting that. You know, we all make mistakes. I I I'm not a perfect bag of rice. Okay. <laughs> One fight for my life later. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm thinking, right, is We're kinda we're kinda gonna make one of these soul wisps that she's got in her hand. These kind of lo little like wispy lotus things. Just drink some water. Good stuff. So the way I've done this before is that I've just used, like, brown watercolor brushes for everything. Hang on. Uh, okay, I missed the spot here. Slayer soulless or something. Okay. And from there, we're gonna kinda keep going with that. Thickening it, thickening it up. Watercolor edge? Ah, that's fine. I don't know why some of these lag more than ooh. I was gonna say I don't know why some of these lag more than others, but now I think I understand now a little more. <laughs> Make this more opaque, so I think I'm gonna have to use a proper brush for that. No, that's not working. Why is that not working? Maybe if I go from... Okay, why does that still work? Oh... I think I see what I did wrong. Okay. Uh, so from... In the just hands drawing, I think some of the... Actually, I have no idea why this is happening, but I, I found the solution. That's what matters. Let's try this again. Yes! Sick of his voice. Yes! Alright. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, I was doing something right. Oil paint. Let's see what oil, oil paint looks like. Uh, the canvas texture off that I'm not a huge fan. Fan of, but maybe for like more deeper parts of it, that'll be fine. Okay. Hmm. 
I kind of wanted to, ha to kind of like trail little things of smoke kind of each and every direction. liking where this is going, but I don't like that you could see the kind of um, different strokes so easily. I'm going to need to fix that up a little bit as well. We can also tuck away her reference for now. Okay, I didn't I didn't uncover that part for the from the just hands part, so I'm gonna need to erase that. There we go. Okay, then from there, I'll go over back here. Mm, I missed another spot, huh? Well, that's easily fixed. Okay, I think that's pretty good for kind of like a starting point. Now we can kind of uh, just blend these together so that they're a little bit smoother. Push density, color stretch, brush size. I am on the wrong layer. How long has that been happening? For a while. Cool beans. Uh, that's good though. I, I, I wasn't... <sighs> I don't know if this kind of like whole tendril thing is the right way to go, you know? It's like, it's nice, but I'm not feeling it. I don't I don't think this is the right way to go. I think it, I think it kind of like fits some more kind of like lonely nature the character gives off that it, it doesn't kind of like have the tendrils going everywhere. I think if it's just like a very small concentrated thing, I think that feels much more in line with what the design kind of tells me. Maybe that's just me, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Blend this out. Hmm. Interesting. Hi, Pabs. Hey, Toast, how you doing? How's your night been going? This is a wet bleed blender. Ooh. Oh, baby. Oh, now we're cooking with gasoline. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Apparently, they're starting up some new hydrogen plant in Europe, I think. Maybe not in Europe, but I, I've heard that they're starting up some kind of new hydrogen energy plant. Yeah, because it's gone so well the past few times. <laughs> Jeez. Renewable energy is a hell of a so still rocking a headache, but otherwise good. How are you? Uh, I'm I'm sorry to hear about your headache, dude. But I'm glad that you're, it's getting better, or hopefully it's getting better. Uh, myself, I've been doing good. You know, I've had a decent day at work, much less busy than I thought it would be, uh, which is a nice thing. Uh, yeah, besides that, not much else to report. I'm hot. I'm f I'm doing fine. I'm healthy. I'm I'm living my best life. 
I think that's the best way to put it. I'm living my best life. What kind of color? What kind of color art does this have? Okay, then it had this kind of like icy blue. Interesting. Okay, then we can just make the brush size a little bit. Piece looks cool. Thank you. Yeah. Um. I'm. Uh, I, I've known the artist who draws as Spasimoto, the the artist behind the character, for a while, which is nice. I I, I like their art a lot. Almost more kind of less intangible. That's way too big of a deep end, though. I uh... Maybe that maybe it's time for that thing. What's painterly blender? <laughs> Ooh. All right, all right. I'm picking up what you're putting down. That's interesting. Oh, I really like that actually. I I just like texture so much. You know, for the longest time, I would I. I you know, because I draw with like this kind of cell shaded style, it's difficult for me to nail down texture unless I use like a material or something. But with this kind of thing, it's always fun to see just how wild you can really get with it. Okay, then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy and paste this. Uh, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Kind of bump up the. Uh, I think we can like bump it up like this, and hopefully this will have some kind of effect. Ooh, I like that. Does that do much actually? Yeah, it does actually. Hang on. What if I kind of rotate it? God, that is so pretty. That is, those are really pretty colors. Okay. Not to pat myself on the back or anything. <laughs> kind of like the one that was up here. Right before these ones, I think. Yeah, this one. Yeah, this one I think is my favorite. Do the soft eraser for these parts here. Actually, we can just do the hard eraser because I don't want them. <laughs> oh no, we will have to do the soft eraser for some of these parts though. So. Hang on. Okay. Then from there, go back and fix this part here. Then comes the shading. Okay, so... Oh, I see I missed a spot here, hang on. I mean, like, uh, yeah, fingertip should do it. Oh, this must be from the hand then.
Perfect. Ooh, okay. Then from there, shading, right. Okay, this might be a little trick. Because we are working on two color layers. Actually, it shouldn't be that tricky. I, I think... Yeah, because if we didn't go for the tendril idea like I originally wanted, this shouldn't be that hard. Alright, let's give it a shot. Okay. This part here. Okay. I think it, I think this might be a good time to use that thing I did it yesterday, or not yesterday, Wednesday. Hard to believe it's Friday. I I. I've, I feel like Friday was yesterday, and this is just like Friday 2, the, the sequel. The squeakquel. <laughs> okay. Alright, I know, I think I, get, I know what to do. Okay, come on here. I think we can, yeah, I think I'm happy with how that came out. We can add some more detail to it soon, but I think we can kind of follow that same process for the whole body. Okay. Which will be easy because there's only one color to deal with. Or actually, no, I think I can make the hair a little bit whiter. I feel like maybe that would be neat to do. Or at least a slightly different shade of, like, bluish purple. You know? I gotta get rid of these layers for them for a minute. Hang on. Oh dear, I missed the spot, huh? Well, that happens. In any case, it's not like it'll affect the rest of the layers, so it should be fine. Unfortunately, I can't just select the color gamut and call it a day because I am using this color in many other places. Okay, now I should be ready to go. Okay. Hang on, something's not right here. There we go, okay. And no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. What is all this? Sometimes. Easy fix, though, thankfully. Okay, then from there. Uh, consolidated shading, I'm gonna call this layer. Ooh. Okay. Look alive. We can fix it as we kind of just uh, go around sprucing up everything. Uh, okay, I think the way these will work is that they will have like a hard eraser part here, and that kind of hard eraser part will kind of diffuse across the sleeve as it kind of like gets darker. So. 
do that. Uh, okay, how about... May not blur. Actually, maybe, yeah, blur. Hang on. Fingertip. Okay, then use a... What was this one? I think, I think this one's kind of what I'm looking for. A little bit. Yeah, okay, kind of like that, essentially, for the parts here. Uh, okay. Even further up, because this would be like... use a thing okay maybe blend a little bit right here sorry that i'm not being very coherent right now but i am just trying to figure this out a little bit you know i'm trying to figure out the tech okay i think that's gonna be the the trick i think that's gonna be how i do it just really abusing the heck out of fingertip smudging uh just like using pastels in fifth grade Yeah, I never really got good at pastels. I remember I had a lot of fun with them, but I never got particularly good with them. Okay. This here. Okay, now let's try this part. that works and then we can just kind of uh okay I've got an idea for how to do the rest of the sleeve a little bit okay so here we'll have the rest of the light kind of hit the the part of the sleeve here mm, it's a little rough how about painterly blender no no it's not gonna work smaller maybe What about then? Um, Need an eraser, very low opacity, brush size maybe kind of massive. No, that's also not quite right. Oh, wait, I got an idea. What if I take the color from here and use it here? Alright, I've got an idea. Okay, I think I might be able to handle this a little better now. Making it smaller, I think, also helped. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. Um... I'm on the right layer, right? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. then suddenly jerking upward for the kind of mess of the sleeves here. It's hard. Also, what's going on over here, huh? <laughs> Hang on. 
I might have to I might have to redo some of these line art parts, but that's fine. I can handle that. There we go. Sometimes I'm, I'm running Windows 10, and sometimes the little search bar in the bottom of the corner that's usually supposed to be for, you know, just searching stuff when you need it. I, again, not to sound like an old grouch, but things used to be just kind of way more functional back in the day. <laughs> This might get a little messy. Actually, this is definitely gonna get a little messy. <laughs> oh, goodness. We select the this one, this one here. I just kind of go hog wild on that. Okay, I need. I think that one needs to be a little bit thinner. For it to make sense. Kind of like that. Mm, no, no, that's fine. Then? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's that's gonna work. Okay, that'll work. Kind of just going like that. Here we can keep doing that. Um, what do you call that? Fingertip smudge. Like that. Then probably with the painterly blender. No, that doesn't feel right. What about the wet bleed? Nope. Blur? No, no. What's nice about it is its definition. Yeah, I just need to keep going. You know, maybe it's not it's not that I like need to do anything to it, it's just that I haven't done done enough. an easier way to do that you know it, it's it's not exactly a bad process but it's not the best for you know it's not the most sustainable vis-a-vis <laughs> -vis the condition of my wrists 
Thankfully, I still got decent wrists, but like, you know, it, every, <laughs> it's important to not like let that go, get to my head. It's important to stay humble with your wrists. You know, you never think that it happens to you until it happens to you, so I'm trying to be, be wary of that. Well, I'm guessing other people who also hurt their wrists also thought of like that at some point, so... You know, it's just important to be vigilant. Alright, I think I got an idea for how to fix this part here. Selection layer, create selection. And right here. It's a rough eraser. There we go, how's that? Nice, okay. That preserves the line art pretty well, I'm happy with that. Although I probably will have to do it a couple more times before the day is done, but I don't mind that so much. I kind of cut myself off there, like, let's go, okay. <laughs> I sound like some sports fan that, that was like, you know, they, they started like rolling out the teams, but then they did like half an hour of, of like a mis of like a speech before they actually started playing the game. Yeah, I've never been to that many live sports games, so I don't know like what the kind of the quorum is for that. I know that in America they have like the that thing where you're supposed to like play the national anthem before every game, but... No, I think yeah, something like that. It, where I'm from, I don't think. Yeah, the decorum of sports stadiums is and likely shall remain a mystery to me for some time. Okay, and we can probably turn off the soul wisp here for a second. Uh, is it in the just hands? Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, I need to preserve it to some extent. Uh, hang on. Got I gotta, I gotta place this just right, or, or else everything shall be for naught. Okay, I think that should take care of it. Close enough. Hang on, we gotta. We've got some tiny. We got a little hair of it still there. And you know, I try to be meticulous about these things. So the wisp would be right around here. Gotta lower the opacity on that so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so what about these? This is for selection. And solid shading. Here we go. I need a smaller eraser. Mm, I don't think that part will be visible, but it doesn't make sense still. Right? Like, it feels like it wouldn't have this quite of a drastic shadow.
Oh, hang on, I think I cracked the code here. Alright, hang on. Oh wait, I think this might work actually. Hang on. And then right here we can use the finger to brush. And blend that out a little bit. Okay, I think I got an idea of how to do this. Carefully so it doesn't go all over the line. Yeah, I believe it or not, I used to suck at drawing within the lines as a kid. Like, I was really bad for a long, long time. I don't know when it changed, but, uh, I don't think it ever did, actually. You know, you look through my sketchbook. Sometimes I make little comics in my sketchbook because, you know, I like comics. I like making comics. And sometimes I... You can very easily tell that I, like, made a speech bubble, like, way too short. And, it, like, I, I tend to draw speech bubbles before I actually write the dialogue. Which is a very bad habit of mine. If, like, that's not a good thing to do. But I can't help it. It's so much fun to just make a very satisfying looking speech bubble and then try to fit the text in there. Rather than make some some wall of text and then fit a shit looking bubble around it. You know, it's much more fun for me that way. Oh, that looks really bad there. I can make it a little bit, bit better like this, so hang on. I've got an idea for how to improve it. Okay. Okay, that's a little better, but still not great. Okay, I think soft eraser is gonna be the way we do this. And with the soul wisp, what's that gonna look like? Okay, I think that I think that works. I think what we might be missing though is a part right here. So I kind of want to do the same kind of fingertip blur thing right here. Yeah, only to that extent, maybe. Uh, what about... No, no. Eh, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it like that for now. I think I think it's it's probably better that way. From there, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump like a light coat of this kind of shadow color right here. No, that looks bad. Again, like that maybe? Okay, now that... 
No, 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 no. Something about this ain't right. Okay, I think I see what happened. I tried to substitute the fingertip smudging for something else, and it just did not look right. That is the blend tool, not the fingertip smudge. Okay. Bam, okay, now we're in business. Now this is a little sexy. Okay, then we can probably use this color for basically everything here as well. Like I said, a big advantage of having a character who only has really a couple colors on them is that you don't really need to worry so much when, you know, it's finally time to shade. Okay, all over the place. Real, yeah, real beefy smudges. Yeah, just like that. Real beefy smudges. I don't. I don't think I've. I've. I don't think. I think that's a new one. I think that's a new sentence that I've said, never before said in my life. Beefy smudges. <laughs> beefy smudges sounds like the kind of, like, like a like a, a very like loaded. I feel like Beefy Smudges is definitely the name of a food product somewhere in a CD bar somewhere in the world. You know, like, like, it, like, like, if you ask like what the hell it is, the owner will just crack a little smile and tell you a little story about it, like how one time they try to make the best sandwich ever by combining all the different flavors of beef in the world, and it just came out awful. But now they, just, but they still serve it in like in memory of a friend or something, or you know, to to never stop like. You know, in memory of their stupidity. That's what beefy smudges sounds like. Beefy smudges sounds like the kind of thing that if you finish it in 30 minutes, you don't have to pay for the meal. <laughs> okay. So that's what that white part of the dress done. I'm probably gonna want to darken this part too. This part here, the mask, is something we're going to want to work on as well. Okay, so mask should be fairly straightforward, right? Like you can just... I am going to put it on a different layer because whenever I use painting for stuff, I like to just use a different layer because otherwise it gets messy. Oh cool, a plane is flying over my house. That's annoying. I keep calling it my house as if I'm as if I own it. I fucking rent. It's the only way to live in this economy. Her right here. No, that's that that looks a little too much like a gradient. I don't like that. I need the blending tool would be good. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh, what about the painterly blend thing? That might be just right for this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is what we need. That's what the doctor ordered. Oh, I see. It's because it's conflicting with the hair, I think. Okay.
Man, I, I hope you go to bed after the stream and take a fat sleep. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take the fattest sleep. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go full hi bear hibernation mode. I'm not gonna wake up till Monday. <laughs> or you know, late Sunday because I gotta I gotta stream that day. I should be good to like take a little nap after this or something. I don't know. Oh right, the nose. I forgot that people have noses. Oh yeah, it's the weekend. Did you forget? Well, that's fair. I've lost I I lose track of time very easily myself. Okay. I uh, need a race from right here. Haven't known the day since March 2020. Fuck, dude, that is a mood right there. It's hard to believe that it happened in friggin' March of all months. I don't know why, it feels like... It feels like March is a weird kind of month for a pandemic to start. I don't... Is it just me? Like, I feel like it, you'd expect it to start, like, in January or February, but no, it started in March. Also, Jesus, that's a little bit freaky, isn't it? <laughs> I like it. I like it. Marsh Leo was so sexy, and now I'm a little- I'm a little sea urchin. <laughs> oh, Friggin... Pre-COVID pa um, pabs. I didn't get COVID, thankfully. Thank God, honestly. But, you know, before COVID hit, you know, I, I went to karate class twice a week. I don't think I would have had time to stream. I don't- I, I sincerely don't think that if I had maintained my kind of current you know, pre-pandemic levels of activity. I don't think I would have found the time to stream. I don't, I don't know if I'd have gotten into... I will say one thing that, like, the best thing to come out of this pandemic for me has been the decision to live stream. Because, you know, it's it's fun. I am having, us, I am having so much fun as a live streamer. But I don't know if I would have done that if it wasn't for the pandemic. And I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> you know, it's like... It's like, do I feel, like, grateful? Do I feel... <laughs> How am I supposed to feel about this? <laughs> I don't know. And, you know, that's not a bad thing necessarily. It's, it's okay to have complicated feelings towards it. I think, I think, as long as I kind of am grateful for what I have now, I think that that shouldn't be too much of a weird thing. About to cry? Eh, no. Sorry, I've already, I've already filled my tier quota for this week. <laughs> try, try again next week. Maybe, I, maybe I might have some, some in stock for you. Oh yeah, I really like how the mask came out. I don't know, I, I think, yeah, I think that this is really cool. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> okay. All right, you rascals, it's time for the horse dance. Oh, crunchy wrists, crunchy wrists. Cry time. <laughs> you. <laughs> Well played. All right, well played. <laughs> I can't even be mad about that. All right. You know what? We've done two and a half minutes for a little, a couple times this week. I think we are. I think we're ready to go for three minutes. You know, I think we're, I think three minutes is possible. <laughs> well played, though. Well played. I will have to take off my socks for this, though. I don't want to. I don't want to start off the weekend by getting brain damage because I try to stream in a horse stance and I accidentally slid all the way down. Fucking doing a perfect split and hitting my head on my desk on the way down. Alright. This time I'm gonna remember to start the timer. <laughs> okay, uh, let me kind of shrink down the window so it's just a timer. Okay, open up the web browser. What? Oh no, I'm sorry? What happened? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> What happened? I didn't know? What? You didn't know what? Nothing happened. Like, that that thing with me hitting my, my head on the desk was just like a fun little thing I said. No cry, only happy? <laughs> oh, don't worry. <laughs> what do you mean, don't cry, only happy? I'm having fun. I'm, I, I always have fun when I talk to y'all. It's fun. You know, I'm... I mean, yeah, the horse stance kind of sucks because I have to be low enough to maintain eye tracking. 
Oh, wow. I have to do this for three and a half minutes now? <laughs> that might be bad. <laughs> okay. I was doing something. Oh, shit. What happened here? Uh... Oh, fuck. Did I do this in the wispy side? No? Where is it? Oh, wait. Maybe if I just... Okay, yeah. I can, I can just get rid of it. Three minutes. Three minutes! Okay, two minutes left. <sighs> you know, I've read that in... I've, I, I watched this guy, right? This this dude who used to... I think his name was Kung Fu Life or something. Uh, this guy on YouTube used to do videos about, you know, like, stance training. Like, he did, he did these tiny workout videos based around Kung Fu. He was an ex- he was like an ex-monk or something. And he said that, like, in a lot of these manuals that they that they use the students to teach them, you know, in a lot of the ancient ones, they'd say like, oh yeah, do horse stance for three hours. And he was like, they, they don't actually do that. That's That'll wreck your knees, it's really bad for you. You know, they used to say like three hours as a kind of exaggeration, because they basically just meant to do the horse stance for a really long time. So if you just do it for a really long time, then you should be fine. This, you're still getting the same training. Because I don't actually know the extent of returns you get. 50 seconds left. The extent of returns you get on isometric training, <laughs> right? Like... Oh my god, this is actually kind of hard. <laughs> like, I don't know if past a certain point you're if you just keep doing like isometric squats it's just not gonna do anything uh you know like if you do like a air chair or something past a certain point i know obviously you're still straining your muscles and still using your physique but i don't know if that's actually like giving you any benefits you know i don't know if there's something good about doing it for a long time like past a certain point i don't know if there's like a tangible benefit Also, I realize now that I did these ribbons in the wrong order. Oop! That's time. Move your legs. I... I cannot move my legs. <laughs> Please move my legs. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Ah. Whew. Okay, yeah, I just had to shimmy on out of the pose. Alright, get out of here. I don't know about cis fellers, but I feel like it would wreck your pelvic floor. Uh, if you did it too long. I mean, guys can also do kegels. I mean, kegels is definitely a thing a thing for people with dicks. Um, I think you exercise it slightly differently, but you can still do it. Besides, these guys, it's not like you were just starting out with three hours right off the bat, right? Like... Uh, I don't know too much about the pelvic floor, actually. You know, I, I, I've heard about it. I keep hearing about it, you know? Like, you gotta have a good pelvic floor, or else you'll pee yourself when you're older or something like that. And, you know, I, I've always wondered what it, what its deal was, exactly. Oh! Wait, maybe I can use the uh, fingertip blur here. Oh. I don't, I don't know if you heard that. Also, don't hold in your pee too long and you'll involuntarily pee yourself. That one I've heard of. Yeah. Yeah, mo when Mother Nature calls, it's it's good to pick up the phone and answer. You know, you haven't you haven't picked up a phone call from Mother Nature in some time. You know, she she gets lonely now that Father Nature is no longer there. It's, it, it's good for you to... Just get in touch every now and again. Okay. What about blend? I think blend might be... No. Something not right here. Hmm. What about... Uh, 
Oh dear, Harvey's having some trouble starting up that game again. Oh, I hope he gets it. Okay. Hmm. Feels bad, man. Yeah. It sucks when- it, it sucks like, like I said, you do get like that- this, there's a unique pang of sympathy you feel when you see some somebody in your friends list and you get that little steam pop of notification where you can very clearly see that they've been trying to start up the same game. That was me yesterday with Terraria mods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's like a distinct kind of sympathy you feel for them because, you know, we, we're all there. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, Today, and today it's you, tomorrow it's me kind of situations. You can't be a dick about it because it's going to be you at some point. At some point, your Steam will just decide to be, your Steam client will just decide to be a huge dick to you. And you're going to be starting up and start and starting over a game over and over again. And, you know, when you, when that happens, you, you want to be, you want to be comforted because honestly, it sucks. Soft, okay, soft brush. Right here. Actually, we could probably start the ribbon shadow a little bit earlier. Gamer sympathy. Yeah, that that that's what it is. It's gamer sympathy. <laughs> gamer to gamer sympathy. Okay, <clears throat> then back here. Oh, wait, this is backwards, isn't it? Wait, no, 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 this whole thing would be, hang on. This whole thing would have this kind of darker shading and it would only be like around here. Right, that it would just kind of heater out a little bit. Okay, fingertip blur. What the? You guys are seeing this, right? It's like, it's like it's got a little thumping in there. I think you can see a face in there if you look hard enough. Yeah, um, recently the guy who did Chainsaw Man, uh, why cannot, can I not remember his name off the top of my head? Uh, the guy that did Chainsaw Man recently released another one-shot story while we were waiting for part two. And it, it's basically about this guy, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try to avoid spoiling it. But at some point it involves the it kind of references like that idea of like a ghost image right like if you take a picture and for some reason a ghost is there and all that and it's spooky and shit and i've always wanted to see like i've always wondered why that never kind of became a thing in the west i know in the west we have uh, we have like our own cryptids you know like we have bigfoot and we have like ufos and all that well, i guess they also have those in japan but had people like take pics and had a fucking skull show up. Yeah, exactly. You know, you don't see that so much out here. You don't see that these days. <laughs> Select layer, create selection. Whoops. Not what I meant to do. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. Um, oh, missed a spot here. But yeah, you don't. I don't know why that like never became a thing of the West because you know, he, in, it, like we like people love ghost stories. I mean, I think they're taken much more seriously. I think in Japan because I I don't know why it's like ghosts are a much bigger deal there. You know, for some reason I'm not. I don't know why, but they just seem to be taken much more seriously. And, well, you know, that maybe with good reason, you know, it's important to be respectful of most dead people. You know, asterisk there. 
in <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Wes says wimpy little ghost. Outside of, of here, that's where the real shit is. Hmm. Yeah, you understand because, you know, in the West, you know, you have. There was actually, I actually read a story about the the first ghost ever reported in the in the U.S. It's a really messed up story because essentially, um, this dude, right, uh, his wife died, very tragic, very bad. You know, obviously that sucks. Uh, but then it got weird because he had a neighbor who had a, I believe, at the time. 16 year old daughter and he started making moves on that 16 year old now this is a, a a man that's already been widowed he is like 40 something so it's a very bad situation as you can imagine the the dad of the daughter is like yeah you're not fucking getting near my daughter dude like stay away man you know which is a sensible thing to do it's 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 a smart thing to do it's it's the normal thing to do but this dude and to this day, we don't, like, it's probably him, but to this day, we, we don't know for certain who it was or, like, who was helping him or whatever. But this dude started impersonating his dead wife as a ghost. And essentially saying, hey, if you don't let these two get married, I'm gonna haunt the shit out of you guys. Which worked. And he got married to that 16-year-old. But and the whole kind of ghost thing became like a huge deal. Like people came all from all over the place and wanted to see the ghost. And eventually they kind of like let the ghost. They kind of like quote unquote exercise the ghost. Um. But yeah, I I think I think that's like the story of America's first ghost. I think like they had like this big kind of trek across different houses to kind of finally banish the ghost. And, you know, it was this whole event, and eventually it was monetized, you know, like, I, I imagine, because there's no fucking way it wasn't this, the dude who wanted to marry the 17-year-old. There's no way it wasn't just him fucking around with the family. And so, and so it's very interesting to be like, okay, first I need to do this to get what I want. Second, how can I make money off of it normally? And it's really just horrid. Yeah, American occultism is a hell of a thing, because on the one hand, you have, like, like, occultism in general is just a hell of a thing. Yeah. Don't, friends, don't let friends get into occultism. I think we, I can do the thing as much here, right? To kind of give it a little bit of extra texture. No, that's that's a little strange up there. Okay, I think maybe if we use it in like measured, kind of calculated strokes, I think that's gonna be yield much better results than than just kind of like blitzkrieging the whole thing. This is the wrong layer. God damn it! Oh well, you can't win them all. Okay, then the hair. The hair might be the most difficult part out here. How 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 are we for time? We we're almost kind of at the three hour mark. So we're kind of right on time, actually. Okay, so we're gonna want to select the hair here. If you're interested to see how I'm gonna do this, I am also very interested to see how I'm gonna handle this. <laughs> because I honestly have no idea. I think I'm just going to do what comes natural and hope for the best. You know, you hear, right, like, constantly, per perhaps not even growing up, but there is that saying, right, that, like, it takes 10,000 hours of practice 
to become an expert at something. I think I have, I think I probably have more than 10,000 hours at this point behind drawing. And I feel that kind of manifests, what's going on here? Oh, shouldn't worry about it too much. Anyway, I, I definitely feel that manifests the most when I'm kind of just thinking about how I'm going to do something. And then I realize I don't actually need to think about it too much. I can just kind of do it and it works and I don't need, and it's great. And I'm going to do this in a different layer just in case. Okay, hang on, hang on though. What a, okay, so I think there wasn't there like a pen that had like multiple lines. I think I'm thinking of like a pencil, of like one of these ribbon pencils though. Hang on. I might use a brush for this as well. I feel like that might be a little bit faster. It's easier to, when I've, like, dyed everything as well. Dyed? <laughs> no, it's... Dye isn't the right word for what this is. This is more like, um... Filled. That's the word. Filled. There we go. Add this to that. Okay. All right, what's going on here, though? <laughs> With this little wispy line over here. Yeah, that is the one downside of going in without, a, without an exact plan, is that you don't know where everything is sometimes. Like, I don't know where this, which friggin' layer this line is coming in from. Friggin', I'm not friggin' Columbo. But you know, I do my best and I sort it out eventually. You know, you gotta have patience, have confidence. Have patience and confidence. Okay. Why did this little bit not get selected? <laughs> okay. So I think the best thing to do from there is fingertip smudge. Real big fingertip smudge. Ooh, that's the wrong layer. Oh wait, I know how to do this. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay, then right here we can just do a little bit of this. Finger smudge that out. here. Blend that out. Is somebody playing the tuba? Holy sh- <laughs> I swear to god I heard like a trombone or some kind of friggin' brass wind instrument in my- in my house. Or in my apartment building at least. I don't think they let you have musical instruments in here. I have a ukulele, but that's mostly for decorational purposes. I can't play it for shit. I feel like I look like I would play the ukulele. I don't know what it is about me, but... It's probably the Hawaiian print background, isn't it? Um... <laughs> But I feel like my my V2 persona has the vibes of somebody who knows how to play the ukulele. Ukulele? Ukulele? I don't freaking know. It's a it's a loan word from Hawaiian. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I said, it's probably the the kind of Hawaiian background. 
Steven Universe looking ass. <laughs> that might legitimately be one of the meanest things anybody has said to me. <laughs> you look like a shoe, you look like a brick, you look like a chicken nugget. That's that's nothing to me, you know, I've I've weathered worse. But you look like Steven Universe, that's fresh, that's new, that that has some bite to it. You look you look like you look like a character designed by a Cal Arts reject. You look you look like a character who was designed by somebody who was who dropped out of Cal Arts. <laughs> Shit, that would be one hell of a burn for any for if I ever beef with somebody on VTuber on I don't I, I hope I don't beef with anybody. Sincerely I'm hoping to lead a career free from quarrel. But if I do end up quarreling with somebody, I sincerely hope I have the wit to fire back at appropriate times. <laughs> okay. I think it's like somewhere here. You know what's fucked up, right? Ruled line. You, if you see the little icon there, it's like four horizontally um, parallel lines. So you'd expect inside of a ruled lines to be the horizontal parallel lines, but no. It's in hatching. For some reason. At least I think I'm pretty sure it wasn't hatching. I'm like 90% sure it wasn't hatching. Cross hatching, no. Black soot, no. Light cross hatch. Also no. Rough cross hatch. Nope. Uh Oh, wait, here we go. Okay, I think I got an idea of how to do this. All right, so duplicate cross-hatching cross times one. Okay, that's a full call it ruled line. All right, then I just gonna, gotta get in there under the hood. Color jitter, ink. All right, angle. Correction, thickness, no, 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 this. Flip horizontal off, flip vertical off. Okay, that's weird. Then why is it so spinning around? Okay, I think I might have gotten the ruled line from somewhere else then. <laughs> this is not how you, how you do it. Which is bad, because I was kind of banking on that to make the hair. Hmm. Well, I guess we're doing this manual. Yippee. Yeah, the, I will say that one thing that that Fire Alpaca and, by extension, Metabank Paint Pro have over Clip Studio Paint is that you can make symmetrical brushes in, like, a flash. You know, it's super easy to do it, and once you get the hang of it, it's so much fun. Uh, not so in Clip Studio Paint. In Clip Studio Paint, if you want to make a symmetrical brush, you can go to hell. I can make this fall to the natural curve of my hand a little more. And don't you worry, I'm using my shoulders. I'm using my shoulders to kind of take the leverage off my wrists. Go. Yeah, I kept I kept hearing draw from your shoulder, draw from your shoulder. And I always felt like, no, it can be like that. Like, they couldn't mean draw from your shoulder like that, right? But they do mean it like that. They do mean, like, you literally move your entire shoulder, arm and all, to draw. I, th I think, like, I'm still not super good at kind of doing that, but at the very least, I've gotten a little bit better. Yeah, there's no easy way out of this one, though. Maybe like the pointillism brush can do something about that. Or not, no, I'll try anything at this point. Not quite what I had in mind, but not exactly bad either. 
I will say though, I don't like kind of how that looks color wise. I think I need a more desaturated color. Yeah, there we go. Not with a milli pen, probably just a normal brush. Hmm. Maybe with the painterly blending as well. Textured blender, here we go. Alright, we can use an eraser. We can actually, no, we'll need to use the cross hatch. Then we can kind of like make, compensate for it with a G pen and everything. Much thinner G pen, maybe, but like, I, th I think we've got a uh, working model here. Something about this doesn't feel right. Oh wait, maybe the dot pen? Ooh, okay. Interesting, interesting. Alright, let me try this thing. Hmm. And just kind of following the more natural curve of my hand. The good thing about this is that I can literally just make my hand go in circles and then do some stuff with... Hang on. Oh man, this is probably hell on my tablet though. Hell on my tablet technique. Uh, then I can just kind of go like this. I didn't, know we had... I didn't know that markers had a function like that. Uh, but yeah, then I can just kind of like go like this and... Actually no, I could probably even go with like fingertip I'm blurring. Yeah, there we go. Can I do that for all of these, actually? Ooh. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Don't like that it's using those colors, though. I don't like that. Although, it could, again, could be kind of interesting. Just seeing those. Let me just push those back down. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm done with the hair. Okay, then... Quickly flexing the wrists so, you know, to, as to preserve their integrity. <laughs> their structural integrity. Like I said, I was trying to draw from the shoulder, but uh, I don't get it at 100% every time. Okay. That being said, the rest of this should be fairly straightforward. Okay. So what about these parts here? Layer, big big brush. Then blend it out if necessary. Ah, that looks. I don't think it works quite at a large scale, but I can keep trying. You know, I think this is one of those things where you just kind of kind of got to keep plugging away at it. Eventually, it'll all make sense. Probably doesn't help that I'm not using the brushes like brushes. You know, I think for a lot of cases you have to do them very thin. You know, 
refine them on into like a scalpel-esque application. I'm just kind of using them like sledgehammers. It suits me though. Wet bleed blender. Ooh, let's try that. Shroud blender. Alright, how about just a needle eraser a little bit? Okay, yeah, that works. Okay. And right here. Here, then use the fingertip blur. And again over here. I feel like maybe this color doesn't quite suit the mood, though. Ooh, yeah, okay, okay. No, lo less saturation, maybe. Okay, this is... Now, that's what I'm talking about. Let that out a little bit as well, so it's not nearly so rough. There. Okay, cool. I do like that, like... <laughs> I do like that because I've, um... I, I've made the Soul Wisp kind of invisible for the moment. It does look like she's just looking at her hands. This is what it feels like when you turn on light mode on your applications. That's not working. Hang on. Okay, this is a good vantage point. I'm always start I'm always starting to think that I should maybe do the take care of the shading first because I feel like that's only then that it like. A lot of the creases, like I should take care of the shading first and then the line art because then the creases make a lot. The because then the creases need to make more sense with the shading. Tough situation. I think that works. And over here. Okay, one. Blur that out a little bit. Definitely blend it out a little more. There we go. Okay. And probably the next thing to do is to make sure that all the lines are visible. So I'm going to select this layer again. 
that's all cleaned up. All right, groovy. Now what? I think I think that's almost time to wrap up then. Oh dear. I forgot that a lot of the hair would be covered up by this part. Okay. Well, I have an idea. Maybe I can make a selection from layer and apply it to this other these other parts here. Alright. Like right here. Nope. How about here? Oh, definitely there. Okay, what about here as well? Uh, that's weird. Where would these be? I think that should cover it. All right, and then we gotta choose a background. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not putting in a mosaic. <laughs> That's a bit much. Uh, okay, so color pattern? What else do we have here? Is there one that's like messy? Like some kind of um No, not quite like this. That's close. Maybe it's made up in the monochromatic pattern. Yeah, like static basically. But like with almost like this, I think. Mm, no, not quite. Let's keep looking around. Oil paint? Huh. Alright, hang on, I got an idea. So rotate the sword. Okay. Okay. Then what about, okay, so scale slash rotate uh, from the center. Yeah, I think, I think we can just kind of really expand this quite a bit and that'll create, I'm not sure what this is creating, but I'm into it. Let's go even bigger. What's that gonna look like? I feel like I'm peeping the horror. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys have heard of that meme. Um, essentially, the idea is that um, I think it came from a joke Tumblr po post. Essentially, the idea was that I think it was Germa. I think there's a streamer called Jerma who and in this kind of joke story I think it was based on a dream that they had essentially in this joke story he had a redeem where that you could make him peep the horror which basically meant that he would have like some kind of weird image that essentially every time that if you looked at it it would feel like the most amazing feeling in the world but it did come at the cost of that every time you peeped the horror a real person in real life would die. <laughs> so, you know, that was a trade-off. Peep, peep the horror. I, I, I think you can do that, and it, I think there are still some places that you can do that if you want to pay for, pay for that, but I but not, not this is not what that's about. Horror, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I remember that being like a, like, so, like somebody's dream, and 
Like a, like an idea somebody had from a dream. Okay, so what I'm thinking here... I mean... I don't know, I... I I've never really had like... A, oh, I forgot the skin tone shading. Hang on, we're not done just yet. But yeah, sometimes I tend to slur my words together, like... I remember I used to say Senator instead of Senator. You know, I realized that when I uh, watched a couple people play Metal Gear Rising and Raiden said, Senator Armstrong, like that. And I was like, oh, I, I should try saying that because I, I like say repeating words that I hear sometimes. And I was like, Senator. And I'm like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. So I gave it another spin, Senator. And I'm like, okay, that's a little better, but I'm still kind of like, Putting it together, like weirdly, like it's it's kind of like getting jumbled in there. You know, English was never my was not my first language. It's my best language probably at this point. I'm gonna go with a hard yeah. It's probably my best language at this point, but you know, it's still it's, some of its finer details nevertheless escape me. God, remember when my span, and this is not something that happened on stream, but remember when my I remember when my Spanish used to be better than my English. What a fucking time to be alive. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Knowing English is almost vital in today's day and age. You know, it's almost it's almost like a survival skill you've got. You know, knowing how to speak English, but you know, I do miss kind of just knowing Spanish. I'm sad that I had to trade off my Spanish skills for English skills. Okay. Anyway. Enough of enough of that sad talk. Actually, that's not exactly sad. It's just kind of nostalgic almost. Anyway, enough of that talk. And, and any whoosably, you know, we got we got stuff to do. Look live. So I'm going to do a thing here where I'm going to merge selected layer and I am going to use that, um, what do you call, colorizing technology. Uh, so I'm going to use colorize all. Okay, it's processing. Yes. It's pretty good. I I, I kind of like that. I feel like. Oh wait, I think I know how to kick, how to put this in the. To, I I know how to take this to the next level. I think. All right. So first of all, obviously, got to do the classic Pablo move of gradient mapping it. I think this is a good one. Oh yeah. I kind of want to retain the... Whoa, what happened here? I kind of want to retain this kind of like lighter pastel color, but... I don't know. Pinlight seems to be working pretty well. I kind of like that. Let's let's go with that. Okay, um... Then... Right. The other thing I was going to do is to, once again, just kind of pack these into my little clown suitcase that I just kind of have it to carry on me at all times. And I am going to grab these two and also kind of put them in a clown suitcase so I can rasterize them into a single layer. Put that up here. And... You know, sometimes you don't always have like a good idea for what to, to use in the background. I have a lot of ways around that because I've been, I'm, I'm a squirrely little guy that hates drawing backgrounds. So I kind of have developed a lot of ways to avoid doing it in, since in my time. Uh, wait, hang on. Yeah, okay, this is what I wanted. But something, if, even if you've got a very simple background, you can do a lot with it just by blurring it with a Gaussian blur. 
because that not only kind of defocuses the background and lets you focus on what it, it, that not only kind of like defocuses the background and lets you kind of get away with more stuff so to speak but it also creates a more kind of photographic style and it kind of emphasizes what's kind of in the middle there which is very very important or some marquee tool okay steady now whenever i do like big complicated lasso cuts like that it always makes me a little nervous i feel like i'm doing surgery i need i need like some dude in scrubs to kind of wipe away my like dab dab my brow so that <laughs> i don't get so sweaty That my brow so the sweat doesn't get in my eyes. That's what they that's why they do it. I am doing the wrong layer. Right, let's try that again. Actually, we can probably merge these two together. And just kind of have the best of both worlds. Gotta head out to the the stinkify. Thanks for the stream. Hey, thank you for stopping by. Have a have a good night, Leo. How blurry is that? Okay, that's good. That's decent. That's Okay, so then we're gonna kind of expand this bubble a little bit. Man. No, that's not gonna work. Okay, so uh marquee tool ellipse from right here. Just woke up, it's morning from time for me to start the day. Alright, well have a good day. Yeah, I forgot you live in a freaky, freaky, uh, you have a very unique schedule. Alright, wash and blur. And then, okay, so. I've never understood how friggin' ellipse marquees are supposed to work. Like, in all my time with digital art, they are still, to this day, kind of haunting me. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know how to handle these things. Alright. But yeah, you can see that, that we've kind of, like... Created a very like low, lo low effort, high high effectiveness kind of atmospheric effect with a little bit of Gaussian blur here and there. But yeah, I think that's gonna be the piece for today. Uh, let me put my signature on this thing. There we go. All right. I feel pretty good about this. I feel I feel like I um I forgot the bow in the back, didn't I? <sighs> Sometimes you have to make extremely hard decisions. <sighs> oh well. Okay, that this shouldn't take too long to fix is the good news. Um Yeah, I think if you like look at the reference. Thanks for the stream, it looks awesome. Hang on, I don't think we're done here yet. <laughs> I don't think we're done. <laughs> because Yeah, if you look in the original reference, she has a huge bow on her back. And I um seem to have misplaced it. Okay, maximum effort. Let's go. Crunch time. Huga saka, huga saka, huga saka. Oh fuck, this is... A... Yeah, oopsies. This is just like asbestos all over again. <laughs> okay. Like I said, we we got this, so we... I, I know how... To, I, I can fix this. I, I can do this. I am mostly confident I can do this. <laughs> That does not mean it doesn't suck. Okay. Yeah, 
I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. This is an easy fix that I can accomplish in basically no time at all. If you can't tell, I'm trying to, uh... What is it? What's the word? Manifest? Hi hype myself up? <laughs> okay, so we can see that the bow doesn't exactly extend past the shoulder, so it's probably more like this size than whatever I was picturing earlier. Oops. Okay. Okay. Then, whoops. Okay. Uh, on this side, it'll probably go to around here. No, I think I think like you'd just barely be able to see it. And then the two ribbons would kind of like come down like this. That would cut into the hair. And then the ribbon there. Okay, then we'd have to adjust that line to be much less, much more narrow, processing the whole line. Gotta match the width of these other lines. This might take a second. Hang on. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. Then we gotta do this. Okay. This thing. There we go. Okay, go, 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 go. You know, when I was younger, one of the and my we first got a Wii. One of the first games I ever played on that console was a port of a PS2 game for the MTV series Pimp My Ride. And you think if you think that sounds awful, that's because it's it kind of was. It was a very bad game. <laughs> I I like to play it though. I I think like my little tiny idiot child brain didn't understand what that video games could be bad sometimes. So what ended up happening is that I just played it and I just had a blast because I didn't know any better. <laughs> and the I forgot literally almost everything in that game except for one thing. And that is, if you start to kind of like take too long on a mission, uh, the guy that's running the game will essentially will say, look at the time, look at the time, you're almost out of it, so get moving. And I still remember to this day him telling me that, him yelling at me like, look at the time, look at the time, you're almost out of it, so get moving. That's never going to leave my brain. Which is bad, sure, but like... <laughs> Whenever I'm on like crunch mode, I always remember that phrase. You know, whenever I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta hurry, I gotta get this done. I always, always remember that phrase, and it's kind of neat that like something, something that inconsequential just stays with you forever. You know, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just kind of something that happens. There we go. Bam. Ribbon in, what is that? Less than five minutes? I am so good at what I do. That being said, I will have to erase all these, um, which is unfortunate, but that's thumbs the breaks. All right. All right, merge select layers, copy and paste that. Okay, speed, I am speed. did I use again? I think it was this one. I think it was this one as well. Um, okay, then we got this. Okay, that. March selected layers. Bam, 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 bam. Let's 
speed run on this crap. Okay. And that's enough. Okay. Are we cool? No, wait, the right, the friggin' the Gaussian blur. Can't forget the Gaussian blur. Boy, let me tell you. <laughs> okay. And now I gotta deselect this friggin' strand of hair again because it looks cool that way. What's going on over here? Hang on. Hang on. Something, something's going on here. What's going on here? Okay, wait, no, now I'm undoing the shading. Okay. I, I think I see what happened here. I gotta erase that. Erase this too. Okay. Hang on. Editing, editing layer only. Okay, do this thing again. There we go. That probably also explains why the shading took so little time. <laughs> Well, that and I was using a brush. But yeah, now, now we should be good to uh, move in on the back bow. The back bow of the operation. <laughs> Let me have this. It, I, I am very tired. <laughs> okay. Uh... Hard eraser up here. And then probably with the fingertip smudge. Here we go. Okay, now I should be clear for landing. <laughs> it's always fun when messing around with layers and your own lack of memory kind of turns every little thing into a federal fucking issue. <laughs> Love it when that happens. I'm so angry I could spit blood. On the bright side, now that I, now that I've like done this at least three times, I should be able to get it back back in working order very very quickly. Okay. Here, mark select layers. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Give me that circle marquee tool right fucking now. That was very aggressive. That that was more aggressive than I intended for it to sound. I'm sorry. <laughs> Honestly, I don't mind it so much. Like, yeah, it's not the it's not an ideal situation, but like it could be worse. 
Forgot to invert the layer. Yeah, I take it back. That was the last straw. I'm going loco. <laughs> I'm, s I'm entering my Joker arc. I keep hearing people say that in like relations to like having a breakdown at work or something. I keep wondering what it, what exactly it means. Like, what do you just start buying a lot of purple and green? You could you could be having a Hulk arc for all we know. You could be in your eggplant arc. Friggin' Joker arc. That's nothing. All right, that's like not a that's not that's not conceptually germane. Your friggin' Joker arc. I've had a Joker arc since I started live streaming because I'm so funny. How about that, huh? I ain't like that shit. I was supposed to add that, not subtract that. Okay, here we go. And I was supposed to subtract that also. Almost there, gang. Almost there. Okay, ready. Launch the Gaussian Blur Cannon! Uh, let's, okay, let's do like a soft 9 at first. And then as we kind of expand, we will... Not the Gaussian Blur that I wanted. I do wonder what the difference is between Gaussian Blur and Blur Strong, right? Like, can't be that much, right? Blur Strong! <laughs> okay, then pull it again. Gaussian Blur. Bam. Okay. Now we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gang. Good, 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 good hustle out there. Um. Yeah, go check out Spessimoto on Twitter. Um, get some good rest. I will. I will. Uh, oops, you're not supposed to see my web browser this time around because I haven't activated the horse stance. <laughs> That wasn't a cue for anybody to blow their points. Don't do that, please. I've, I've gone through enough today. Please, no steppy. Oh fuck! Oh hell yeah! Harvey's playing Jackbox. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go bully him. And by that I mean say hi. All right. Uh, everybody have a good weekend, and I will see you all on Sunday. Bye-bye.